CarMax, the official used car retailer of the University of Richmond Spiders. We'll have a redo on that tip off. Well, Mulligan. Yeah. To start <laughs> A10 conference play. At least we are playing. Unfortunately, many of the A10 games have been postponed. But we are underway from the Robins Center in Richmond, Virginia, and the St. Joe's Hawks will have an opportunity to fire up the game's first shot. They have struggled offensively, shooting just 43% from the floor, averaging just 71 points per game, but they're going to get a high percentage shot to start the game. And Edge Abina has the first two of the game. Now they move hard, they cut hard on the offensive end, St. Joe's, so you got to understand with the Spiders, you got to play hard on the defensive end. Now on the offensive side, Isaiah Wilson takes the Spiders' first shot. He missed it, but as a jump shooter, a freshman mistake, Greg, from Eric Reynolds, who commits the foul. Uh, Coach Lane is looking at him right there and wasn't pleased with that foul by Reynolds. So Isaiah Wilson, the Spiders' sophomore, will go to the line to shoot two. His responsibility tonight, at least at the outset, is going to be to guard Jordan Hall. We'll see how that goes. Wilson has been so good against taller, prolific scorers during the non-conference portion of the schedule. He has done such a tremendous job. It's gone unnoticed, Bob, but he's really done a nice job on the defensive end, just ball hawking those guys, those scorers. Bucknell's Andrew Funk most recently. Ryan Reynolds of Toledo, A.J. Green of Northern Iowa. Fighters had a second chance opportunity there when Wilson missed the second free throw, but can't convert. And it's a two to one St. Joe lead and Reynolds throws up an air ball. So the freshman has had a tough first minute of Atlantic 10 action. Look at Tyler Burton hanging in the air. Greg, like he was suspended in midair. He was going up for the dunk and then crossing in front of him was Taylor Funk. Yeah, I really had to like redo how, it. Yeah, I like how they pushed the ball, the Spiders off that, that miss. They really got it out to Gilliard who found a streaking Burton who hung in the air and drew the foul of a Funk that time. Among all the things that Tyler Burton does well is shoot free throws. He's at 78%. Knocks down the first one there. The scary thing for Tyler, he, he's still peaking as a player. He hasn't, hasn't maxed out yet. A lot of upside. Well, his breakout game last year as a sophomore probably was the St. Joe's game in Philadelphia when he poured in 25 points at five rebounds and a couple of blocks in the Spiders' blowout win in Philly. St. Joe's won a wild nail biter here at the Robin Center at the end of the regular season last year. Nice up and under by Cameron Brown, the captain for two. Yeah, 6'5", strong body junior for St. Joe's. Again, these guys are confident, Bob. You look at St. Joe's, they have won three of the last four at UR here. So with a recent victory of 76-73 last year in this building. Yeah, that was the crazy game in which Matt Grace hit the three-pointer. The Spiders hoped was at the buzzer. As it turned out, it was after the buzzer, and St. Joe's walked out of here with the three-point win. Golden against Abina. We'll watch that matchup all night long. Golden wins that one. Yeah. Grant has so much versatility to his game. You have to watch him to pull up for the jump shot because he's been hitting his three. Then he could put the ball on the floor either hand. And he's very patient when he gets in the post. Spiders by one. Two minutes into the first half. There's Hall guarded by Wilson. That's the matchup we talked about. Here's the other one. Abina and Golden. Abina, his second field goal. You know, he played against Richmond with Vanderbilt in two games and did not score in either one of those two games when he was with the Commodores. Didn't play a whole lot either. Yeah, didn't. But he's got four here at the outset tonight. Gilliard, step back, halfway down and out. Burton with the rebound, but he throws it to Cameron Brown. In transition, 4 3. That's the new game of today. It's yeah. <laughs> a so one on two, two defenders back. Cameron. Brown said, I'm going to stop and shoot the three. A 24% three-point <laughs> shooter, I might have had. That's unbelievable. <laughs> and a 9-5 St. Joe's lead. Teardrop, Isaiah Wilson dancing on the rim and dropping home. Uh, 
Both teams come out with a lot of energy, which is you expect opening day. Funk misses his first shot, the three-point attempt. Tyler Burton, the Spiders' leading rebounder, seventh in the conference at seven per game. Grab that one. Golden with a strong attack, and a little too strong off the glass. And the Hawks with a two-point lead and the ball. Jordan Hall now guarded by Tyler. One, really step up on the defensive end. Two, get a lot more movement on offense, a lot one-on-one. -on -one. They gotta start moving the ball. Jai Bailey with a nice attack will get him to the free throw line. You saw the field goal numbers up on your screen a moment ago for the game, but even more enhanced in the second half, Greg St. Joe's, eight of 13 from the floor in the second half. The Spiders just two for eight. Well, that's the issue right now. You can't score and you can't stop. So that's, you can't win games like that. Nope. So they have to turn it around quickly. There's a lot of time left though. Jai Bailey's third point. Six of nine on the year now from the free throw line and one more coming. Need every point you can get now if you're the Spiders, especially with the clock stopped. Bailey only makes one of two, but excellent hustle by Tyler Burton. Sherrod can't get it to go. More hustle by Burton. A little bit better ball movement here. But Bailey's reverse layup was partially blocked by Taylor Funk. That's good defense by Funk. Fifth year senior. Burton blocks that one. Funk hits the floor and Burton gets called for the foul. Now, it's a great hustle by Funk on the block and he hasn't been scoring. He kept running, Bob, and watch it. He comes off this curl. Ah. Wow. Oof. Not much contact there at all. Didn't see the contact. I one. think Taylor Funk just faked out Ted Valentine. Yeah. That's what I think. But it's part of the game, and Funk is a veteran player. He knows what he's doing out there. Yeah, coach has a legitimate gripe there. Yep. Funk one for two at the line in the first half. That's just his ninth point. He averages a little over 14 a game. That is his 10th point of the game, now 1,235 in his St. Joe career. Ties him with the great Delonte West. 37th on St. Joe's all-time scoring list, and now he moves ahead of him. Pretty good company. Yeah, great company. Delonte playing professionally for yep. a few years. What, 20 points, St. Joe's lead. I don't think anybody saw this coming. Golden attacks. Again, I think the Spiders are just rushing it and really trying to take over and get all those points back in one possession. Can't do that. Knocked out of bounds. Stay with St. Joe's Isaiah Wilson back in, playing with the three fouls. Yeah, he's bringing the energy. He's got to bring, someone's got to bring the energy on the defensive end. That's where you have to start. Making stops if you're the Richmond Spiders. Funk into Brown, who's had the hot hand. Sherrod knocks it out of bounds. Cameron Brown is six for eight from the floor. He's got seven rebounds. Yep. Junior captain to inbound. Shot clock dwindling. Brown lost it. Gilliard's got it. Three on one. Isaiah Wilson misses the three. And I know old school basketball folks will cringe on that yeah. one, won't they, Greg? That's a tough, yep. tough shot. Yeah, Tyler can just take that to the bucket, right? Yep. Dunk that one. I mean, I get it. You want it the three points. That helps you when you're down 20. But yeah, you're three on one there. You would have had a layup.
Gilliard almost got that one. Shot clock at one. And another foul. All right now. And well, right now we're going to watch Taylor Funk shoot a lot of free throws. So these are the technicals here. That gets him to 13 points. And then I think it was Jordan Hall, right, who was fouled shooting the three-pointer. And now he'll shoot the three. Third one will be a live ball. We could go almost an entire season, Greg, without seeing a spider as experienced and disciplined as they are foul a three-point jump shooter. And we have seen it twice in the last minute tonight. Yeah, it's almost like they're not desperate, but not playing smart right now and trying to get back in the game in one possession or, or two possessions. And it's, you got 11.43, ton of time. Just got to go through, and we talked about executing the, executing the game plan that set out. Spider's got to get back to that and refocus. Jordan Hall makes only one out of three there, so that could have been a lot worse. They had a chance for five points at the free throw line. They got three of them. Gilliard scores. That may get him fired up. Yeah. Needs something to get someone motivated. Right, maybe he needed the technical. Yeah. He didn't want to see it, obviously. But who knows? And again, to your point, now you need some stops, need some steals, some turnovers. Hall got caught up in the air, and Gilliard's got it. Wilson on the move. Sherrod off the dribble. Contested, and the rebound by Cameron Brown. Wilson guarding Reynolds now. Reynolds to the basket, spins it in. Good looking freshman. Yeah, he looks really poised and composed out there. Gilliard again to the basket. Missed the contested layup. And a wide open three for Cameron Brown. It is his night. Downtown Cameron Brown, 16 points. You see it, Bob. It's a lot of one-on-one -on -one by the Spiders. You're not used to see them try to do it all in one swoop, one possession. Not a lot of ball movement on our passing. It's all one-on-one. -on -one. Oh, my goodness. Eric Reynolds oh just goodness. banked in the three. Still a lot of time. You've got to get focused. Got to settle down. Move the basketball. Get in your offense. Sherrod. There you go. Out of the Richmond timeout. And they've got the bodies to do it as well. Yeah, that's exactly. Meantime, St. Joe will be content to stay in its half-court game that has been so successful. Forrest, line drive three, everything falling for the Hawks. Uh, they're spreading you out deep. That foul will be on Cameron Brown. Yep, with the crowd finally sarcastic yep. clap. Uh -huh. Well, St. Joe's is 12 of 17 in the second half, 71%. Yeah, that's the difference. They're hitting their shots in the second half. Spiders are 4 of 17. Matt Grace. Three ball. Finding well, the threes will definitely help. Spiders five of 20 from beyond the arc. Grace has five points. 
but the lead is 25. Gilliard with the steal. In transition. The pass to Grace. Missed that one. Good offensive follow by Sherrod. Had it blocked out of bounds. Again, make it ugly. That's what you want. Yep. A lot of time left. You can't panic. Take your time. Just execute on the offensive end. Get your shots. Hall right up on Sherrod. K.O. backs in on Funk. Another one from Matt Grace. Oh, in and out and out. Wow. Hillier, nice steal and the layup. Need more of that. With under eight to go. Abina had the big first half. Funk steps back, missed the three. Grace tips the rebound to Gilliard. Crabtree left it short. Grace kept it alive. Sherrod left it short. Ah, the shots are there. Just not being able to make them. Yep. Couple of clean looks at threes by a spider team that averages about 10 a game. Yeah, you gotta make stops though. This is key right here, make stops. Forrest lobs it to Abina, that is quite a weapon. And the foul on the floor before he could get the shot away. That should have been an easy two. Yes, it should have been. Gotta take advantage of it. Connor Crabtree misses the three and Jordan Hall with his eighth rebound. Cameron Brown has nine rebounds. Jordan Hall has eight. They've out-rebounded the Spiders, 40 to 28. It's about their average per game, 40 rebounds. Still 640 to play. Hall missed a tough shot, and Grant Golden with his seventh rebound. The Spiders must score the basketball now. Take advantage of this law by there Burton you go. from Golden. There you go. Puts Tyler in double figures with 11. Golden, a nice assist. He has not scored in the second half. He had those 14 first half points. Got to make stops, Bob. Bring it down to try to get it to 10, close to 10 by the next media timeout. Hall, finger rolls at home and one. Boy, he was going to go up and dunk that, and then he saw the contact coming and tweaked it to a finger roll layup and the foul. Uh, that's a Gilliard foul there coming over, trying to smack it out. Which will be his fourth, including the technical. Golden and Burton both come out. Golden with 14, Burton with 11, the only double-figure scorers for the Spiders. And now Jordan Hall completes the three-point play. He's got 13. Jordan Hall has 13 points, eight rebounds, six assists. Wow. Isaiah Wilson off the dribble. Yeah, that, it's a tough, tough possession, Bob. You're coming down. You look at it. No one touched the basketball except the... And that one goes out of bounds. Well, yeah. Cameron Brown's got himself a double-double tonight. First of his career, 15 points and 10 rebounds. Wow. It's a career high, obviously, in rebounds for him. Yeah. Got to run your offense here. Crabtree is open. That's his shot but it just has not been falling for the home team tonight. Wilson through the contact, misses it. And Abina with another rebound. Not even make shots, that's the key, like you said. Spiders shooting 31% from the floor for the game. 
Brown got away with a travel. It'll be Richmond ball anyway. And they're giving the Spiders a window of opportunity with yep. these missed layups and short slots they're missing right now. The Spiders got to take advantage of it. They have had good looks. Yep. Crabtree attacks. Oh, and misses the layup. And Hall retreats. Bailey hounds. And Grace flies out at him. Funk rolls it off the heel of the rim. Four and a half to go. Always got to make some shots here, Bob. Grace spinning along the baseline. Just hasn't been fluid for the Spiders tonight. K.O. fouled before the drive to the basket. You would have rather the whistle been swallowed on yeah, that one. Yeah. But it's not. Abina will get the foul. It's only a second personal. And the Spiders will inbound because it's only the fifth team foul on the Hawks. As we said, St. Joe's will get a break after this one. Not that they wanted it, and certainly after the way they played tonight, they would have rather played, but their GW game has already been postponed. Their next game is Davidson next Wednesday night. Burton missed it. And out of bounds. They've yeah. done a nice job on Burton. Let's give them credit. They've challenged him on all his shots. Isaiah Wilson, just three Hawks captains. One of two here, and Tyler Burton, the spider rebound. Nice spin by Jai Bailey. Boy, sure looked like he got hacked yeah, yeah. on the arm. That looked like a foul. They sure missed that. Did. They missed that one. Gilliard off the inbound. Burton tries to get the rebound and lost it out of bounds. Yeah, I think, that I think was, that'll go back to yeah, Richmond. That's the Spiders basketball. Yep. yep. It, it's a, uh, in my opinion, the referee, Teddy Atlas, asked for help. He shouldn't have to ask. Right. If you're the official and you see that. You're supposed to run. I know he's the lead official. But you've got to go up and tell him. Hey, Pretty Eddie, clear. Yeah. Yep. As you saw on our replay. Sherrod to the basket with the left hand. Can't get it to drop, but he'll shoot a couple. Yeah. As, Good play by Nick to draw that foul. He's right to the chest of Abina. And Nick Sherrod to the line for the first time tonight. His one three-pointer tonight moved him into eighth on Richmond's career list. 213 three-pointers. Let's see if they go into press after this. Of Absolutely. Course. K.O. coming in will give Richmond a chance to set up that press, and they do. St. Joe's 12 turnovers tonight. They have no one back here for this. This is a good opportunity to double team, take the ball. Oh, I thought Jai Bailey was going to be able to get to that one almost. But the Hawks, with their great length, yes. with their ball handlers, able to throw over the top of it. Funk, what a fadeaway three. That's a beautiful shot. It's only a second three-pointer of the game, but they haven't needed it from him. Burton working hard. Golden wide open. Can't get it to go. It's been that kind of night all the way around for the Spiders. Good hustle there by Jai Bailey. And now he just got called for the technical foul. Or both of them. Both I think they I both think, got yeah, it. Both yeah, I think Reynolds and Bailey 
Can't be one. Will be double technicals. Yeah, they just kept fighting, fighting for the ball, ball after the whistle. Yeah, they've shown right here. And they start showing each other, as basketball players do. <laughs> and I mean, it really does kind of look like he just called it on Bailey to begin with, but it is going to be a double technical. Yeah, what's the story here? Reynolds and Bailey. Oh, the referee, uh, I was looking for the other referee, Teddy Atlas, he's talking to Billy Lang, say Joe's coach there. So the Spiders get the ball off of the held ball. Matt Grace missed that three. That's about the spot he hit the one last year after the buzzer at the end of the game. It's 2.40 to go. St. Joe's will continue its mastery here at the Robin Center. They'll have won back-to-back in -back four of the past five in this building, and the Spiders will suffer their first home loss of the year. As you know, this is a dangerous team. We said St. Joe's, they're starting to get their chemistry together, Bob. Really good players. And the Hawks will be in no hurry now. Two minutes to go. Impressive performance, specifically in the second half. 43 to 21, St. Joe's. Now the A-10, Bob, we said it. Tough, tough team, tough, tough teams in the A-10. Davidson's had the hot hand of late. The Wildcats have won nine in a row. Dayton's won some big games, had the win over Kansas. St. Bonaventure has uh, not quite lived yeah. up to expectations, perhaps. What we're saying is the A-10 is tough. Yep. So is Taylor Funk. Yes, he is. Very all, good. All of a sudden, he's got 18 points. With a minute to go. Hawks will be 7-5, and 1-0 and in the 8-10. Their first road win, true road win of the year. Make it 5 of 7. And they came close in that Bradley game yep. before Christmas. The Spiders see their six-game winning streak snap. They'll go to 9-5 and 0-1 and and in the Atlantic 10. Abina missed it, and yep. Burton with the rebound. And one more shot for Richmond. It'll come from Matt Grace, whose three is in and out. Good hustle by Tyler Burton. And that will do it. Yep. Not necessarily who won the game, but by how much is a yep. shocking Atlantic 10 outcome tonight. An 83-56 St. Joe victory here at the Robbins Center. Total score, average 13 points the last four games for the Hawks. One and done for the Spiders. Hall hounded by Wilson. Down the lane, Abina, three for three from the floor, <laughs> Edge Abina. Uh, Hall's looking for his guys too, Bob. Six, seven, he can pass over you. So he's been looking for, as you said, he had 12 assists against Bradley the other game. Nick Sherrod, the first sub, is in for Richmond. Golden, excellent post move. Boy, did he get deep into the lane that time, Beck. Well, if they're going to watch him one-on-one -on -one with the B night, Grant's going to have his way in the post. It's hard to watch one-on-one -on -one in the post. You've got to have to make a choice of double-teaming at some point. Coming off that double-double against Bucknell, 22 points, 10 rebounds. 17th career double-double. Hawks by four. Wilson all over the place against. Especially early on, set the tone around the league that uh, it's going to be tough playing in the Robin Center. 
Now let's see how the Spiders play against the Hawks with a couple of changes on the floor. Matt Grace is in for Richmond. Gilliard misses that three, and Jack Forrest off of the St. Joe's bench grabs the rebound. The junior, the transfer from Columbia. And as he attacks the goal, he gets fouled. That'll go on Isaiah Wilson. It'll be his first. And Forrest, the 6'5 junior from Ballakinwood, Pennsylvania, suburban Philly. Non-shooting foul. Averaging about 13 minutes a game, three and a half points, Jack Forrest. Also, Demir Bishop, transfer from Xavier, is in for the Hawks, his second year with St. Joe's. Off of the inbound, there's Taylor Funk, smooth looking shot. Yeah, he's got a quick release for uh, Biggie as he's 6'8. Get it up quick. 1,227 points in his St. Joe's career. And a six point a lead for the visitors from Philly. Matt Grace, first move of the night, all the way around and in again. Matt has been very aggressive in the post when he gets, catches it. Usually he's to pass it out, but he's really attacking the rim now. He had a good game at St. Joe's last year with 10 points, a couple of three pointers. Funk hounded by Burton and Grace. Wilson with another steal. Isaiah Wilson showing his prowess on the defensive end. Yeah, they try to post him up that time, giving up seven inches, and he did a nice job. Burton doing some ball handling and some passing. Grace a little bit short on the three. St. Joe's, by the way, a good rebounding team. They out-rebound their opponents by almost four per game. Grab almost 40 rebounds a game. Now Taylor Funk, second team preseason All-Atlantic 10. Gilliard goes for the steal, almost got it. Shot clock winding down. Tough shot by Jordan Hall. who that shot remind you yeah, of? Yeah, that looked like uh, Tyler Burton right sure there. Did. A little fadeaway jump shot. Hall considered an NBA prospect in just his sophomore season. St. Joe's, we've got an NBA scout in attendance here tonight. Matt Grace, nice move, didn't get it to go. Tips it and keeps it alive to Isaiah Wilson. Uh, he is playing aggressive, Matt Grace. So is Isaiah Wilson. Look at that twisting, oh, knifing, yeah. driving layup by the sophomore from Pittsburgh. Uh, he knew he was faster than his defender, which is, uh, he had a mismatch in Funk. Double team there, almost a steal. Forrest to the basket, high off the glass and missed it, and it'll be Richmond ball. How about Isaiah Wilson start offensively and defensively? Uh, I really like his aggressiveness and his attack to the rim against a bigger opponent. He knew he had the foot speed to get by. And Isaiah really done a nice job on both ends of the floor early in this game. He'll get his first breather. Wilson leaves with five points, a couple of steals. Brings that type of energy you need, especially on a defensive end. It just it rubs off on his teammates and get after the defensively really helps out. Connor Crabtree with the ball now and Andre Gustafson off of the spider bench for the first time. Golden's back in the game, taking that jumper. Leaving it a little short. And Demir Bishop the rebound. Kotsper Kwacic, a 6'8 freshman from Poland, is also in for St. Joe's, which turns the ball over again. Greg, they do turn it over a lot, about 14 times a game. Yeah, that time, a little out of control. Didn't have anywhere to go. Bishop. That's their fourth turnover already in the first eight minutes. The Spiders, who don't turn it over very often, only 10 times a game, have not turned it over yet tonight. No, that's exactly right. Number one in assist turnover ratio in the 8-10 right now, 1.7. Golden can knock that down, and he does. Grant Golden is 10th in the Atlantic 10 in three-point field goal percentage. The most improved part of his game. No question. Reynolds, a nice driving layup. The freshman's first two points. I kind of surprised Golden on that layup there. He didn't think he'd get it up that quickly. Reynolds got it up real quick off the glass. Three-point lead for St. Joe's. Golden attacks, 
and kisses it off the glass. Grant Golden already with nine points. Uh, he knows he can take Charles uh, Coleman off the dribble, Bob, and he faces up. Quick drive to the basket and hitting the deck hard is Reynolds who finishes back-to-back -back layup for Eric Reynolds. Good start for this Atlantic 10 opener. Golden KO for two. Yeah, again. Nice decision. Uh, Grant Golden tried to get KO in the offensive score, and he did. There's another category that Grant Golden is amongst the league leaders. Assists. That's an air ball three by Quachik. And the Spiders could take the lead. KO saves it. Crabtree, KO, attacks and rolls it off the rim. I don't know how that didn't go in. <laughs> Good action, though, by the Spiders. They're cutting to the basket, a lot of movement, sharing the basketball right now. Really good action by both teams halfway through the first half. Here's the East Carolina transfer, Charles Coleman, a seven-footer. Reynolds had the hot hand, but not that time, not from deep. And again, the Spiders could regain the lead. Golden thought about it. Gilliard has not scored much in the last couple of games. Golden has, and he is again tonight. He's got a dozen already. Yeah, he's on fire right now. Again, that's what he does best. He can spot up and hit that three. Shoot 44% from three-point range. The 105th double-figure scoring game of Grant Golden's career, and it came early tonight. The long rebound starts a fast break for the Spiders, but Gustafson earn more. How much more can Grant Golden do at this point? Five of eight from the floor, two for three from beyond the arc. Well, off to a quick start like he did against Bucknell. He can finish, he's versatile. What you say, he can put it on the floor when he wants to highlight. He's done a little bit of everything. Spotting up for a three, he hit the three, play with it back to the basket, and then he can just, just any time he wants, he'll find a guy open too, Bob. He's a great passer being at 6'10". Really, really good. 16 points. He's already got 12 tonight. He averages 16 a game. So he's had some big games the last couple of nights. Uh, 22 and 10 against Bucknell. 10 for 12 for the, from the field. 2 for 3 from three-point line. So he's clicking on all cylinders. That little break didn't stop him. Uh. No, not at all. He picked up right where he left off. And the Spiders with a two-point lead. And now Jai Bailey, the sophomore, off of the Richmond bench, and he gets a turn at guarding Hall. Abina with Golden on his back. Pushes him away from the basket. Abina tried with the left hand, and Golden finishes it with the rebound. Yeah, good defense that time. Held, him, held his ground, Golden, in the post. Bailey from Golden for two. Jai Bailey, great catch and layup. Really good catch. I didn't know that pass was going to get through. Double team on Hall. Leaves Cameron Brown open. Offensive rebound. Funk. The three by Hall misses and Crabtree a nice rebound. Big lineup that the Spiders have out here. Have their biggest lead at four. Golden missed that one. Quite that having on it in his hands that was, right that time. Yeah, it was on target though. Reynolds. Crowd wanted to travel, he missed the shot. And Gustafson tracks down the loose ball. Yeah. Spiders looking to extend this 7-0 run here over the last three minutes. KO attacks. Now on the low block against Taylor Funk. Tough fadeaway. KO around the rim and out. And Abino, the rebound. Yeah. KO, that's not his game. He's got to go to the basket instead of fading away. Hall to the basket. Way off the mark. But the rebound for Jordan Hall. Abina and one. 
That's good. Middle names start with the letter A as well. <laughs> <laughs> and now you know the story of the officials tonight. Well, you better not uh, get in an argument where they know which one. <laughs> yeah. Which one are you? I can hear Coach Mooney. Which one are you? Yeah. Brett or Bert? <laughs> And they say the opposite name just to get out. <laughs> Abina fails to complete the three-point play. Keeps it a two-point Richmond lead. Seven minutes, first half. K.O. going to try it again. Couldn't get the shot away. Now in the paint against Abina. Again with the fadeaway, which he misses. Wilson tried to keep it alive, and that'll be Isaiah Wilson's second foul. Yeah, tough foul there. You don't want him to get in foul trouble. He's done such a nice job on a defensive end. And like the aggressiveness but picked up his second foul in the process. And out he comes. Jacob Gilliard got a rare breather. Jake averages 37 minutes a game. That's the second most in the A-10. Coach Mooney doesn't keep Jacob on the bench very long. Anyway, he gets him back here because Wilson has the two fouls. Probably won't see him again the rest of the half. So yeah. now it's Jai Bailey on Jordan Hall. The lob to Abina, and Grace blocked it. Max nice Grace block. making his presence felt again. Oh, a nice block. Burton, Gilliard, clean look off the back of the rim. Points has been a struggle for Jacob Gilliard the past three games. Everything else he's doing great. Yep. Steals, assists, just hasn't scored much. Funk is strong with that one, and Burton had perfect position for the rebound, and Cameron Brown the foul. Yeah. The Spiders are doing a nice job so far. Missed shots, they're getting those rebounds, which is nice to see. Neither of the leading scorers has done much offensively yet. Tyler Burton, two points, both at the free throw line, and Jordan Hall for St. Joe's, just the two points, one for three from the floor. Nick Sherrod back for the Spiders. That's Sherrod had the hot hand at the end of the Bucknell game before Christmas with the five straight three-pointers. Ten to shoot. Step back by Burton. Swish. Big time shot right there. I'll tell Good. you what, Billy Lang is hot, and I understand why he wanted a push-off yep. on Tyler Burton before that step back three and didn't get the call. Hall lobs it up. Abina. Finishes, flushing it home, and one. Again, great look by Jordan Hall. Really nice play. So watch this play. Jordan Hall keeps his head up, finds Abina on a grab by Jacob on a dunk. So Abina in double figures for the eighth straight game. Already with 10 here in the first half. So he and Golden pretty much matching each other. Golden has 12, and now Abina has 11. And the Spider lead is two. Matt Grace. Sherrod. There goes the streak. He had made five in a row before that one from the last game, from the Bucknell game. Oh, Hall shot is blocked, but the foul came down below. Yeah, I think Sherrod reached yep. in and grabbed his arm. They talk about the top assist guys on the floor with Jacob uh, Gilliard averaging six and a half assists and Jordan Hall 6.4 assists a game. So they both look for their players, their teammates, and do a good job of finding them. And Hall at 6'7 really does a nice job of seeing the floor. Two free throws here for the sophomore from Wildwood, New Jersey. Really like his game. Grant Golden back for Richmond. Like his game as well. Yeah. <laughs> and Ed Jabina standing right next to him. Hall, a 71% free throw shooter, makes two. And we got a tie game with five minutes to go, first half. Well, they give Golden room out there, and we know he can make that shot. Hilliard, nice step back, but a little bit strong, and his shooting struggles continue. But not his defensive ability as he knocked that one away, and Abina throws it away. Jacob Hilliard forced that turnover with a terrific defensive play. Yeah. 
quick hands by Jacob once again. You can't go near him. If you're trying to drive on his, on his strong side where he's playing defense and he's coming off his man, more than likely he's going to get his hand on the ball and get a steal. He's not going to get credited with a steal on that one because the Hawks did get it back before throwing it out of bounds. Jacob, 402 career steals. The NCAA's Division I all-time steals leader, averaging 3.4 a game this year, which leads the nation. Spiders trying to break the tie. Golden halfway down, and it rattled out on him. Reynolds the rebound. Reynolds the drive. Reynolds the dish. Abina travel. Yeah, a couple times. Yes. It's good, good defense by Force Abina on the baseline. He didn't have anywhere to go with it. He's trying to gather himself. So the Spiders get it back. Another chance to break this tie. Both teams have gone dry here. The Spiders won for their last eight from the floor. St. Joe's two for their last 12. Burton from the baseline against Hall. Two star players. Burton fighting hard and lost the ball, turns it over. Good defense there by the sophomore Jordan Hall. Hall off a screen from Funk off the dribble, hits the three ball. Good team offense there. Taylor Funk provided the screen and Jordan Hall the points. These guys are 6'7, six, 6'8, six, playing the perimeter very well. Golden. Gustafson and Golden. Tried to bank that one in and missed it. Well, the strategy has been now is they let Golden shoot the ball from the perimeter. They'll take their chances. Cameron Brown shovels it off again to Abina, who missed it with the left hand. They are looking for him on the low block. Gustafson drops it home. It's a good take by uh, the Goose. These guys are breathing heavy, Bob. A lot of guys <laughs> breathing heavy. I mean, Jordan Hall is breathing heavy. <laughs> We are waiting on a whistle, which would get us to the under four minute timeout with 2.40 to go. That's a tough pass right there. Yeah. Funk grabbed it. That was a tired pass. Yes, it was. <laughs> Funk from about 28 feet. Wow. And he's limping heading back to play yeah. defense. It's his first three tonight. He averages 3.3 threes a game. That's tops in the 8 10. We tell you how deep he can shoot it. Woo. It's all in the. Pre-game, how far he could shoot it out. Gilliard again with the miss. A little frustration painted on Jacob's face right now. He is 0 for 5 from the floor. Talk about some tired guys out here right now. No whistle has been blown. Neither team over the limit shooting fouls either. Forrest, tough drive with the left hand, puts it in. That was a nice move by Forrest. Uh, with the thing you have to do with the other spiders, you got to sure up, especially at halftime, talk about the one-on-one -on -one defense on the ball. The guys are going a lot of dribble drive penetration, getting to the rim. Biggest lead of the night for St. Joe's, half a dozen. And Abina blocks golden shot. Hilliard steals the ball from Hall. It's three on two spiders. And it's golden. And that's why they have the six point. Now five point lead. Golden's first free throw, he has 13 here in the first half. The only Spider in double figures. Edgeke Abina, the only Hawk in double figures with 11. The two big men are playing big. 14 for Golden, he'll go out. The Spiders will go much smaller here as Connor Crabtree comes in for him. It's kind of matching the uh, size of yep. St. Joe's, Bob. Yep, they've got Abina out of yep. the game. Funk, who's more of a perimeter player, is their biggest guy on the floor right now at 6'8". Tyler Burton at 6'7 or so, Richmond's tallest player on the floor. As we approach the last minute of the first half, Forrest threw two spiders and one of them fouled him. And, and what St. Joe's is doing is very smart. 
They are spreading the spiders out on the offensive end and making them play defense. And you have to honor the three-point shooting of Funk. So you got people way out. And then what's happening, they're taking one-on-one -on -one off the dribble and getting to the rim. Which Jack Forrest just did there a moment ago. Jai Bailey charged with the foul. Forrest, who had been three for three at the free throw line, a very small sample size, missed the first one. He gets one more. Grant Golden's back when the Spiders get the ball here with a minute two to go. Yeah, the bigs are coming back in. Yes, that didn't <laughs> take long, did it? Yeah. For both teams. Yeah. Grant and Abina. Jack Forrest, one for two. Five points, St. Joe's lead with a minute to go in the first half. See if they can free up Nick Sherrod, maybe get another look at a three. Gilliard, Sherrod, left it short. Hawks can't quite go for the last shot. Spiders should get it with about 10 seconds. But you got to get a defensive stop here. As you said, Beck, they're shooting 52% from the floor. Reynolds missed a tough shot. Whose ball? It'll be St. Joe's. Yeah, and Jacob actually got away with a foul. He smacked Reynolds on the arm on that shot. That's what Reynolds is looking at. His hands are so quick that referees didn't see it. <laughs> Which would have been his second foul, so the Spiders fortunate there. Billy Lang's got to be pleased with what he's seen from his guys here in the first half. Remember, they're coming off of a COVID pause. They lost one game, canceled one game because of it their Holy Cross game right before Christmas. K.O. goes for the steal, not quite. So they're trying to get off to a better start this year. They've lost their last four Atlantic 10 openers. One of those to Richmond. Hall guarded by Bailey. Forrest attacks on K.O. who deflected it. And that'll be a spider foul as Funk Came up with that 50-50 ball right under the rim. Well, that's talking about being tough and grabbing that ball and getting after it. You know, that's what you're saying when you say this toughness and getting those loose balls. Very important. Now you're putting Funk at the free throw line. Where he is a 94% free throw shooter, 16 of 17. It's actually been quiet, too, in this first half, yeah. really. Yeah. Like you said, he and Tyler Burton have been really quiet, and even Hall hasn't really scored a lot of points, but Hall's been dishing the ball a lot more. Yeah, he's got five assists already. Jordan Hall does. Coming off of the career-high 12 assists in their four-point loss at Bradley, middle of December before Christmas. Well, missed the second one. Gilliard has a couple of seconds here from to Tyler Burton at the... Getting ready to inbound right in front of us. And here we go, second 20 minutes. St. Joe's by six. That's their largest lead of the game. Spiders led by five during that first half. Cameron Brown from deep. Golden, good box out for the Spider rebound, his fifth. Jacob Gilliard has not scored. Nathan K.O. just two. Gold on the 14 first half points. Gilliard, Golden, Burton. Short on the three. See if the Spiders can get some sort of live ball turnover and Get a little energy going down court. Good double team on Brown. Now guarded by Wilson. Brown connects on the jump hook. Yeah, it's too easy that time. Yeah. Again, the Spiders really got to get tough on a defensive end and make, make a statement here in the second half playing defense. Biggest lead of the night for St. Joe's. A lot Tyler. of standing around yes. with the Spiders. One-on-one, -on -one. it's tough. That's a one-on-one -on -one move by Tyler Burton who forced the contact and drew the foul. Yeah, that was on Funk that time. Yeah. 
Second foul on Funk. Yep. It's not a bad offensive play when everybody's yeah. standing around, and that is to clear a path and let Tyler Burton go. Yeah, they're trying to get him on track. He's got to get going. Again, he had that huge game at St. Joe's last year with the 25 points. Two for two at the line tonight. I will tell you, Greg, he has become the new Nick Sherrod in the past several years. In between those knee injuries, Sherrod was always the first guy out here getting extra shots in before practices and before games. Now it's Tyler Burton. Yep. Anytime I come early to a practice or pregame shoot around, Tyler's already out here shooting. Yeah, a lot of expectation for Tyler. He understands that. He's got to keep working on his game. Hall guarded, pestered by Wilson. Deep three. Gilliard the rebound. Trying to push it a little bit. Gilliard. And Hall grabs it in the corner. Back to a six point lead for St. Joe's. Pace has really slowed up here. <laughs> St. Joe's pace yeah. right now. Hall trying to back Wilson in, which he did that time. That was well done. Yeah, and we talked about his length and his size against Wilson. Would he be able to do that? Would he do that? Spiders tried the backdoor cut, couldn't connect, and Golden's pass goes over the baseline and out of bounds. Again, you've got to come out with a lot of more energy on the defensive end and start picking it up if you're those fighters because this team is getting more and more confident mm -hmm. as the game goes on, St. Joe's. Go up by double figures. Neither team has done that yet tonight. Hall's going to back in on Isaiah Wilson again. Reynolds off the dish for the three. Eric Reynolds. And... Uh, feared that Hall would go into the pay mm -hmm. post and post up. And he's starting to do that. He's finding his guys if they double team him. So that's the danger. And it's an 11 point St. Joe's lead. Kale against Funk for two. Yeah, that's what he needs to do. Nine point game. Hall off of the Funk screen. Eric Reynolds from deep, but an offensive rebound for Cameron Brown, who's in double figures with 11. Uh, that's just toughness there. Yeah. You've got to block him out if you're the Spiders. Can't allow him to get in there. And again, this is an excellent offensive rebounding team. 11 offensive rebounds per game for St. Joe's. Gilliard almost intercepted that pass to his own teammate, Grant yeah, Golden. Sure did. And Abina swat. Is. We miss him here. Both those guys are great guys. Inbound. That's a great play. Gilliard to Burton to try and get the Spiders going. Joe Lenardi, longtime analyst on St. Joe's radio broadcast, known to the college basketball nation for bracketology on ESPN. Burton on defense there. Brown over him for two more. Cameron Brown has 13. Yeah, it's too easy though, Bob. No resistance right now by the Spiders. And we talked about really stepping up on a defensive end. That's where they're gonna get back into this game. Brown came up big in this building last year with 15 points in the Hawks win. And he's got 13 here in the Robin Center tonight. That is a vicious collision. And um, the foul will go on Isaiah Wilson. Yeah, it's third. Third Yeah, foul. his third. Uh, he tried to cut him off and couldn't get there. Both guys' elbows are high, and they took a pretty hard fall. Grant Golden gets a breather along with Wilson and K.O., which means Sherrod pictured there. Matt Grace and Jai Bailey all back for Richmond. 
Yeah, they're trying, the coach is trying to find the right combination right now. Alley-oop to Wabina from Reynolds, and the Hawks are having some fun right now. Abina has 13, and that's the St. Joe's lead. Matt Grace, some nifty ball handling. Going one-on-one. -on -one. Blocked shot by Abina, though. And it'll be St. Joe's ball. That was a tough call there. Yeah, it it was. Like the Ball oh, looked like two uh, St. Joe's players knocked that ball out. Teddy Valentine's right under there, so don't want to question him too much. Spiders down 13, still a lot of time. More than 14 minutes to go. Got to make some stops. The three in the corner from Eric Reynolds puts him in double figures with 10, and the Spiders turn the ball over. And Hall will follow his own miss. But Matt Grace blocks the shot, and then he gets fouled by Hall. Yeah, that's a great play by Matt Grace, to be honest with you. Bob, what the Spiders have to do in that time, I, Jacob Campbell tried to go for the steal, and he left the guy wide open. you got to be careful of doing that. It's a lot of time in this game, 14 minutes. You can't gamble. Stick to your defensive uh, philosophy, and you, you'll get back into this game, but you got to stop, make stops. Coach Mooney was going to use a timeout, and then the Spiders turned the ball over, and he never used it. Burton misses the contested layup. Cameron Brown has been their second half star. There's no doubt about yeah. that. Funk for two more, and now.